Psalm number four, beginning with verse number one. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Mm. Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and trust in the Lord. You may be seen. Amen. For a few moments on today, I want to encourage you from the subject. God is trustworthy. Mm. God is trustworthy. As we proceed daily trying to do our best and be our best, we are constantly faced with issues that can detour us from our process. We all ultimately know that it is this process that leads us, Deacon White, to our purpose. As we endure the process, there are many ups and many downs. We have our good days and we have our bad days. Yes. But through it all, we must know who we are and we must realize where we come from. Peter lets us know that we are a chosen priesthood. We are a royal people and we are a holy nation. He calls us God's special possession. Isn't it good to know what today that you are God's special possession? No matter what goes on in your life, you are God's special possession. If you're sick, if you're wounded, if you're hurt or you're distressed, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and God's special possession. And Peter tells us that we are this and we can declare the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do I got some folks in here who've been called out of darkness? Yeah. Into his marvelous light? Isn't it good to know in the midst of all that we endure that we have been selected? You are chosen. You have been selected. You are royalty. You have been selected. You are a part of a holy nation. You have been selected. You are God's possession. Yes, you have been selected and you have the right to worship him in spirit and in truth no matter what goes on in your life because you've been selected. But do you understand that in the midst of all that we are enduring, the sickness and death brought about in this pandemic, that God is still smiling on us. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's still in the blessing business. Same. He still loves you. In spite of yourself, we have to embrace the fact that no matter what life looks like, we are God's 
And he has called us for a purpose. But I'm going to tell you something, Sister Millie. Being selected doesn't release you from the burden of struggle. Somebody needs to understand that on today. You are blessed to be a blessing. God has selected you for a divine appointment, but that does not eliminate struggle in your life. It does not eliminate pain. It does not eliminate hardship. It does not eliminate sickness. But you can thank God on today that you have been selected. And because of this, Sister Nicole, we can rejoice. We can walk in confidence. We can boldly and honestly worship his holy name because we have the power to endure this struggle. David, he lets us know in the text that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. And the Lord hears us when we call. I don't know about you, but it's good, isn't it good to know that the Lord hears you? Yeah. When you call? Yeah. See, it's good that he ain't like some of us. <laughs> we just let folk go to voicemail. Please say, Lord, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> ain't you glad that God don't just send you a voicemail? <laughs> Come on, dog. <laughs> but God hears us. Yes. Yes, he does. When we call. And not only does God hear us when he calls, he answers. Amen. Amen. We can take great confidence in knowing that the creator of heaven and earth has set us apart for a good work. And he has set us apart for this good work before we even knew about the good work. Yes, yes. Yes. Amen. However, when we understand that we've been set apart, we do understand that we have a choice if we're going to obey or not. And it behooves us yes. to obey our Lord and strive daily to make him our choice. Because we know and we understand that we're going to be honest on today. There are many options out there. There are many distractions in the world and there are distractions in the church. But it is our mandate to focus on Jesus Christ no matter what comes our way. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be tempted yes. to look in other directions but there's power in the name of Jesus. I understand and I'm not going to hold you too long on today, but I understand that you may feel that the assignment that God has given you is heavy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it is. Because God is calling us to love folks sometimes and they don't love us back. He will call us to labor for folks that don't want to labor. <laughs> And sometimes the burden seems hard to bear. Yes. But how many of us know that he's a burden bearer? Yes. And a load lifter? Yes. But our uncertainty at times may cause us to be frustrated. But we are simply called to hold up the blood stained back. Yes. We are called to be living epistles. We are called 
to carry the gospel to every nation. However, we can have confidence today, Deacon the Simpson, because we don't have to do it in our own strength. Because I know in my strength, I'm weak. But when I am in the presence of God, I'm strong. Do I got five folk that want to stand in the presence of God? Think about it like this. If you're not standing in the power and presence of God, you really ain't standing at all. Say that again. If you're not standing in the power and in the presence of God, you really ain't standing. Because if you're not standing for God and with God, you will fall for anything. But as we engage God, and as we engage His Word, understanding what He desires and doesn't desire, we grow stronger and stronger. And we can stand like Moses. We can stand like Joshua. We can stand like Elijah. We can preach like Peter. We can stand boldly like James. We can minister the word like John. And we can be a great witness to every man, woman, and child just like Paul. When we are standing in the power and in the presence of Almighty God. But you've got to understand on today that God is trustworthy. Uh -huh. So, with that said, what can we lean on when the outlook in life does not look positive? Number one, a very simple message. Number one, know that God has set us apart. You have to know deep down in your spirit that God has chosen you and he has selected you. And because he has chosen you and selected you, he has set you apart. And know because you've been set apart that you are a royal priesthood. No matter what folks say about you, you are a holy nation. You are God's special possession. And because we are God's special possession, we have a right to worship him and declare the praises of our God. But you have to believe on today that God has set you apart. That doesn't mean that your ministry looks like my ministry. That means you are walking in the will and the way of the Lord and doing what he has called you to do. Number one, know that God has set us apart. Number two, and I want you to listen to this closely. We have to genuinely get to God. Not just on Sundays. From 11 to 12, 30. Not only on Tuesday during the prayer call. A Thursday during the prayer call. But we have to genuinely strive to get to God each and every day. Check this out. 24 7. 365. And if it's a leap year, 366. We have to genuinely get to God. And not only must we get to God, we need to lay hold to God. That means I genuinely want Him in dwelling inside of me. Yes. I genuinely want to do the work he has called me to do. I genuinely want to walk circumspectly in the world. I intentionally want 
to be an example. I have to genuinely desire to get to God and hold on to him. But not only must we hold on to him once we get there, we need to take hold of his steadfast love. Mm. Why must we take hold of his steadfast love? You can't show what you ain't got. We have to have God's love dwelling on the inside. Yes. And to understand that he saved a wretch like me. I don't know about you, but I haven't been good my whole life. I haven't been good my whole life. I didn't grow up past the most. I grew up Larry Mosley. But because I grew up Larry Mosley, see I'm talking about me thinking the Simpson. I was in need of a savior. And because I was in need of a savior, I genuinely had to get to God. And because I genuinely had to get to God, I had to get him by any means necessary. It had to make sure that God was in my heart. I can't worry about somebody else's heart. I got to worry about Larry's heart. All right. Because he dwells on the inside. I know how to love my brothers and my sisters. I can be appreciative for the sacrifice that he paid on Calvary. Calvary. And because I know that God loves me in spite of me, I can love other folks in spite of themselves. So we have to know that we are set apart. We must genuinely get to God. But last but not least, because we have the confidence that we are in God's presence, we know that when we call, he will hear. And because he will hear, we know that God is near. Yes. I don't know about you or today, but isn't it good to know that God is trustworthy? But with the variant spreading rapidly, isn't it good to know that God is trustworthy? The infection rate is on the rise. But isn't it good to know that God is trustworthy? If you're lost and you cannot find your way, isn't it good to know that God is trustworthy. When sickness tries to take over your body, isn't it good to know that God is trustworthy? All your accomplishments are due to the presence of Almighty God. Isn't it good to know that God is trustworthy? I will tell you this and I will leave you all alone. No power can defeat the God that guides you. God will work out his purpose in your life and through your life. God will bring victory. God will bring joy. God will bring peace. God will order your steps. God will make your path straight. God will guide your decisions. God will make your way to move. God is the way out of your way. He'll turn your darkness into light. God has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. A songwriter said, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. For the presence is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other.
Let me share this with you. I know you already know, but let me share this with you. <laughs> the difference was the mighty presence of God. Times may have changed since then. The time that we live in may seem uncertain. But the effect of God's presence remains the same. He was trustworthy then. And Ray, guess what? He's trustworthy now. So what can we lean on? What can we lean on when the numbers are going back up? What can we lean on when the hospitals are beginning to fill back up? What can we lean on when the children are getting sick? We know that there's power in the blood we know that God has never left us nor forsaken us. And we understand, Sister Patty, that God has set us apart. We have to genuinely get to God. And we must lay hold to Him and manifest God's love in our lives. And because of this, no matter what the circumstances may be, we have confidence. Do you believe on today that you have confidence in God? Do you believe on today that he will do just what he says? And when he calls on, when we call on him, he is close. He hears and he will answer. Do you believe on today? that God is trustworthy. If you believe that God is trustworthy, give him some praise on today.